Hello and welcome to my tutorial series on how to model game assets in Blender. This is part 8 and today we're going to model a wine bottle and some glasses. This is the finished model and as always I designed this so I can follow along very easily. First of all let's add a background reference image by pressing Shift A, go to image, then background image. And by pressing G you can move the image as you like. Now add a cylinder to your scene by pressing Shift A, go to Mesh, then Cylinder. And start scaling it down in X and Y by pressing S for Scale, then Shift Z. By pressing G you can move it into place. And then press the Tab key to get into Edit Mode. By pressing Command and R, you can add a loop cut. And by moving your mouse, you can place the loop cut wherever you want. If you want to see through your metal, just like here, you can press Alt and Z to get into X-ray mode. By pressing Alt and left click, you can select this whole face loop here and by pressing S for scale you can scale it down. Keep adding loop cuts by pressing Command and R and by pressing S you can scale them down or up to follow the shape. You can bevel these hard edges here by selecting it and then press Command and B. By moving your mouse you can set the width of your bevel and by scrolling the mouse wheel you can set the segments. Keep adding loop cuts by pressing Command and R to build your shape of the wine bottle. Select this face loop here by pressing Alt and left click and then press E to extrude then S to scale. By selecting the median point as your transformation pivot point, you can easily scale evenly when you have multiple loops selected. By pressing Alt and left click, you can now select this edge up here and scale it up a bit. By right clicking on the model, you can now choose Smooth Shading. Let's focus on the bottom part of the bottle. Get back into edit mode by pressing the tab key and then select this face down here and press I to inset it. And by pressing G you can move it up a bit. This edge here is a bit too hard for my taste. So by pressing Alt and left click I selected the edge. And by pressing Command and B you can bevel this. Repeat the inset step a few more times to create this rounded shape here. By 
if you want to separate a part of your model, you can just select the faces that you want to separate, then right click, go to separate, and then by selection. Now you have two objects that you can shade individually. Now add a cylinder to your scene to start modeling the glass. Pressing Shift A, go to Mesh, then Cylinder. With the S key, you can start scaling it down. Then go to Edit Mode by pressing Tab. And by pressing Command and R, you can now insert some loop cuts and start scaling them to follow the shape of the glass. Select the top face and pressing E, you can now extrude this face up. Now you can just repeat the extrusion with the E key. Then enter some loop cuts with Command and R, and then start scaling them up to finish the shape of the glass. Now for the hard edges, just select the edge by pressing Alt and left click and then press Command and B to bevel it. By moving your mouse, you can set the width of your bevel and by scrolling the mouse wheel, you can set the number of segments. Now go to the top face, select it, and press I to get an inset. Now all you have to do is press E to extrude, then Z to move it in Z direction, so down, and repeat the extrusion and moving step, and follow the shape of the outside of the glass. Now let's add a bit of detail to the glass by adding some loop cuts to the object. Just press Command and R, then select some of the loops and start scaling them up or move them around until you have this kind of a lid. Go to Modifiers and select the Subdivision Surface Modifier. Right click on the model and choose Smooth Shading. Now you can add a loop cut to define the form of your model or select the edge, right click, choose Edge Crease and set the edge value. This way you don't have extra geometry. Now in shading, we don't need the BSDF shader. Press Shift A, go to Shader and add a transparent shader. Next thing we need is a glass shader. Add this one too. And now with the use of the mix shader that we can plug in the surface of our output, we can combine these two shaders here. Now 
when we are rendering this material now, we will get some black spots. And with the help of this math node that we set to greater than, and an input node called light path, we can now connect the ray depth into our greater than node at a value of 10. and use this as our factor. So now these black spots would be displayed as this light green color. Now select the bottle and give it the same glass material by pressing this small number here. You can convert it into a single user material and just change the color of the glass. Select the cap part of the bottle. Press plus new to give it a new material. And then change the base color I decided to dial down the roughness a bit more. If you want to, you can now select the glass part of the bottle, go to edit mode, select some of the faces and assign the same red material to it. For the label, start selecting some faces like here on the right hand side press the plus and assign now we need a new material and a texture in this case an image texture connect this to the base color and open this wine label image texture. Under UV editing, you can now scale these faces to match the texture. As you can see, when you're scaling the up the faces, you can see the texture better. Remember, in UV editing, you scale the X and the Y axis, not the Z axis. All right. Some of you guys wanted to know how I do this little turning animation. So I decided to add this part to the video. To do the animation, I simply apply all the modifiers and join my objects into one by pressing Command and J. created this little platform here by using a cylinder. I do the animations in EV. So under render properties select EV as your render engine. And now we have to and now all we have to do is set two keyframes. Go to layout and open up the timeline at the bottom of the screen a bit more. Now select 
floor object and apply all transformations. Now press right click, go to keyframes and choose rotation. Set the length of your desired animation. In this case I choose 120 frames and then press N to get into the object informations and under rotation under Z type in 360. Now add a new keyframe by pressing right click on the object, go to keyframes and then choose rotation. Now when you click play you will see that within the 120 frames this object will turn around. And if you tried this tutorial yourself, you can show me your work on Twitter or Instagram. If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification button to keep yourself updated on new videos and tutorials. Thanks for watching and have fun creating!